So uh, this is today's plan. Um, we'll finish uh, deriving the computational complexity of uh, taking the derivative of a uh, neural network. And uh, um, so this is uh, today's um, plan. And on Friday, uh, we'll learn how do we code this uh, back propagation in PyTorch. So this is um, Friday's coding lecture is a real big deal um, that we'll learn how do we take derivative of a neural network. Um, and let's review uh, this uh, um, big O notation a little bit. So like I said, basically use human language, we use plain English. Big O is nothing but basically um, we describe like um, how an algorithm. So normally, um, for example, so F of N is the number of operations in an algorithm with respect to certain quantity. For example, the number of unknowns, the number of parameters and etc. cetera. Um, so uh, let's do a few more example. So for example, if we have the computational complexity of uh, so of some algorithm is three n square plus n, then this is just a big O of uh, like uh, we say it's order n square because So we can say this is a lower order term. Um, so the key takeaway is, uh, um, the key takeaway is um, adding um, some operations that is a magnitude a magnitude lower does not change the complexity of an algorithm, so of f of n, okay? So we know that 3n squared is already n squared, so um, n is requires less uh, in terms of magnitude than n. So um, this is just order n squared. So similarly, for example, um, if we have n cube and if you plus n square, if you plus even like a, you know a million n. Sorry, this is uh, like ten thousand, a uh, hundred thousand n. Um, I mean, it's still order n cube. So no matter how big number you multiply in front of a lower order term, it doesn't change this big O. Uh, it's because uh, uh, n can be increased like much bigger than this number. Okay, so now uh, let's uh, try to derive the uh, complexity, the computational complexity. Um, So the complexity of um, of taking a gradient of let's say um, of a loss function. So and this loss function is like a. is we have uh, is we have totally capital N samples, all right? Capital N is the number um, of the data points we have. Um, and let's, for simplicity, let's consider, uh, consider a single sample first, 
Okay, so consider a single sample and a single layer. So taking derivative of a neural network uh, involves two steps. The first one is forward pass. So, um, and uh, so let's review this again. The forward pass, if we draw two consecutive layers of neural network, all right? So for example, this is L layer and this is L plus one layer. Um, the output of the alt layer, um, the output of alt layer, let's say this is a L, got uh, transformed to um, the output of uh, the L plus one's layer. So it has two main operations. The first one is an affine linear transform. So uh, we say Z of L plus one is the weight matrix of alt layer times the output of the alt layer plus the bias and because today today we are talking about uh, computational complexity and normally we'll ignore that because uh, uh, we'll see so the computational complexity of adding a bias is of lower magnitude than uh, this matrix mul vector multiplication so we can pretty much ignore this all right and then um, this uh, z is gone through a nonlinear activation function. So um, it is uh, to become the uh, output. Oops, sorry, this is Z. To become the output of uh, L plus first layer. So this is a forward pass. Um, and now let's. Uh, um, Let's count the complexity. The complexity is not uh, too difficult to count. I mean, so let's uh, assume, let's assume, um, in the alpha layer, it is an M by one vector, okay? And uh, um, in the L plus, first layer it's an m by one vector um so basically um the biggest deal of uh, um this layer is is this matrix vector multiplication so let's uh, let's count the complexity um the complexity is this is our matrix this is our matrix W, okay? So this is our matrix W, and it's it has, uh, it has, um, let me use another color. So it has a uh, um, M rows and N columns. Um, it's getting multiplied with an M by one vector. So um, this is M by one vector. And this is A of L, and this is W of L. So we're counting uh, the computational complexity um, of this. So for each single row, okay? So for example, if we isolate a single row, for example, the i row. So W i is i row. So I'm uh, omitting this uh, superscript, but you guys know. Uh, and multiply with this. So I'm omitting this uh, superscript. We totally, we have N columns, right? And we have N elements here. So each element is being multiplied with its corresponding element in that position. So totally what we have is uh, uh, M multiplications. All 
all right so this is one row and uh and then we have to add them add them up right so uh that because it's in a product so we have uh we have to add them up and to add them up we have uh, n minus one additions so which means which means it's uh two n minus one oper operations um And we totally have all the n operations for a single row. So this is for a single row. Now, how many rows we have? We have m rows. So, um, so this is order of uh, m times n that many operations and it is uh it is order n square if uh if m is of order m okay so m is a big o m so basically basically so here is our assumption to simplify this procedure is uh to perform to perform a single matrix vector multiplication if our i mean matrix is uh has this uh you know like uh this is like the length of this matrix uh is the same orders of mag i'm not saying it's a square matrix i'm just saying this m uh has the same order uh scale the same with our n okay um and then it takes uh, um, order n square that many operations to do a single matrix vector multiplication. And then, um, so then we have uh, um, WL, AL. So uh, if, we, uh, if we count this, this is order n square. And then we add a vector so because vector so this vector has only has only uh order n that many operation it, it's a order lower than order n square so uh it doesn't it doesn't like uh, going it doesn't affect like the overall order of this operation and next we look at uh so this is the the l plus one next we look at uh we apply the activation function to get uh, uh, to get the output because the activation function is apply so f of some vector all right is equal to f of z1 f of zn so it, it's getting applied element wisely which means uh, this one takes about order n operations uh if this uh um, if this uh, uh activation function is a simple activation function so now let's summarize for a single layer for a single sample a single layer it takes order n square that many operations to compute the forward pass. So now let's, uh, um, if we have, now if we have a, if we have um, number of NL layers, right? So number of layers, and we have capital N that many uh, number of samples, or say data, uh, because for each data we have to, we, we have, to have this forward pass procedure and uh so um so complexity complexity of a forward pass is of order n square keep this in mind this is multiplicative so for each layer, we need to have order n square that many operations. If we have an L layer, then we have to multiply it. And similarly, if we have big N those uh, that many samples, 
uh, we have to multiply n as well, all right? And like I said, we can, for simplicity, this is for demonstrating purposes because we are comparing um, like uh, the cost, the comp computational complexity of a forward path with back propagation. So it, um, we just simplify it. Uh, we just assume number of layers, you know, is big O of N and uh, uh, and capital N is big O of N as well. So a single, a single forward pass for a neural network takes about order N to the fourth, those many operations, if you know, under certain assumptions. I mean, this is already a lot, by the way. So uh, now let's uh, move on. So the complexity, so this is forward pass, all right? This is forward pass. This is computational complexity of a forward pass. Next is a backprop. So backprop, what happens is, um, recall the definition, what we have is, uh, uh, is delta. So recall delta is defined as follows. So delta is defined as the partial derivative of our loss function with respect to Z of L. Okay. So by this definition, uh, we then have, um, so again, let's draw this figure right here. And this is alpha layer. This is L plus one layer in a neural network. Uh, we have, uh, um, so our output is an M by one vector A at a layer L and uh, at layer um, L plus one, it is, uh, so um, yeah, I should use A L has size this. And uh, an AL plus one has, is an M by one vector. Um, and then, so uh, and we'll review this back prop again. So, um, so for example, the loss function taking derivative of the weight of this layer, all right? So again, I'm not, we're not like uh, caring about the bias too much uh, because the bias in general, um, the computational complexity is an order magnitude lower than the weights because uh, this is a vector, but this is a matrix. And this is again, chain rule we have, this is, uh, this is partial of L uh, with respect to Z of uh, L plus one layer. And then we take uh, derivative of that, okay? So in last class, we learned that this is, this is delta of L plus one times um, A of L output transpose, I think, I got an email asking why it's transpose here. I mean, of course, first one is, uh, um, is a dimension match. Okay. So I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but matching dimensions is one of the most important skill. If we want to play the PyTorch Lego, this building block, because, uh, we have to even though ev almost everything is automated, but keeping track of dimension is something we have to do, okay? So for example, we know the weight matrix here transforms something uh, from n dimension n to dimension m. So this weight matrix, uh, this weight matrix is, uh, is of a matrix of, uh, um, of n, I'm sorry, m by m dimension okay so same thing its derivative is uh 
is m by n dimension. Okay. So this guy, okay, this guy by definition, it's a derivative. This is a scalar function taking derivative of a vector. It has the same dimension. So same shape, or say dimension, with uh, z of l. All right. So um, what's z of l? z of l is m by one vector. So this is uh, m by one vector. And now it's kind of clear. And uh, because, uh, um, oh, sorry, l plus one, my bad. Same shape with uh, z of l plus one, and this is an um, this is an m plus one vector. Okay. So what happens is, what happens is, then right here, what we have is. Uh, we have m rows, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, wait a second. Um, let me look at my notes. So we have this is dimension. This is of dimension um, one times m. This transpose. So overall, if we multiply them together, uh, we will have m by m matrix. Somehow we're missing a transpose, but uh, uh, let me think about it. Um, So this matrix is map mapping uh, this to here. So this is n. Uh, we need to have n columns. Um, somehow I think this should be transpose. But let me add it because in the end we have to do transpose. So we'll learn in coding lecture why. Uh, so why we need to do uh, transpose is because our data is feeding in uh, by rows so uh, not really like uh, columns so in reality in reality our weight matrix is given in this way so our data our data is feeding like in this way so uh, for example uh, if this is one by n vector then this is uh, m by m matrix so this is our weight l and we get uh, our one by m, and this is uh, z of um, l plus one. So in reality, it's something like this. Um, we used this is just because uh, it's simpler to present, you know, using column vector. And uh, so in this chance, I want to review why um, why we have. So, um, so why partial uh, z of l plus one partial the weight equals this transpose? Okay. So, um, I mean, we would like to, despite some of you might have already learned this in matrix algebra, but I still want to take this chance to review uh, this. And recall, so let's, for simplicity, for simplicity, uh, we drop the superscript. So we basically, we have this, all right. And we can even drop this bias B um, for a moment. And uh, z is a vector uh, with, I forgot, I mean, 
m by one. Okay, so this is m by one vector, and w is uh, uh, is m by m matrix, and a is an m by one vector, uh, and b is an m by one vector, but uh, b doesn't matter that much. And the question is, what is a z taking derivative with respect to w? So this is uh, this is a major question. Um, yeah, then w m by m. So um, to answer Ben's question in the chat, uh, to answer Ben's question in the chat, I mean, in the actual in the actual training, it's actually this scenario. Um, so a sample is actually being treated like a row vector. Um, and that's because the reason of this is because normally in the training, multiple sample will go into the neural network at one time. Um, so because we'll stack these, uh, you know, these samples in this way, and it's simpler to track uh, in this way. Um, I mean, some people still write, uh, uh, you know, so some people still write uh, like the weight in this way, but this, let me add a remark. This is uh, what happens, but we'll see in coding lecture what happens. Um, this is like for demonstrating purposes. So, so what happens in, so in real training, all right. Um, so now let's take derivative. So let's take derivative. I mean, these kind of a taking simple derivative is what we're gonna have in exam and stuff. And uh, um, the other coding, you know, things uh, uh, will have those tests, for example, in projects. And uh, we have W is WIJ and uh, I stands for the rows and J stands for the columns. And this is uh, an M by M matrix. And we want to figure out what is this, why it is, uh, uh, why it is transposed, why it's not uh, uh, something that uh, you know, like a column vector. Okay. Now, if we look at, if we draw something like, for example, Z is, if this is our Z, and it is uh, uh, m by one vector, and this is our W. And for simplicity, we assume B is zero vector here, because uh, it actually, if we take derivative of this, it has nothing to do with B. Okay. And this is an ith row of a W. And this is A vector. So this is a uh, um, M by M matrix, but this vector, okay, this is a row vector, it is one by M. And this one is an M by one vector. So first let's look at what is uh, Z I. So um, first, let's look at what is the R. Okay. So Z I is maybe something here. This is ith component. That's Z, and the ith component of Z is actually the inner product of uh, this row with this column. So if we take derivative of uh, this uh, z i, because this z i, so I think I, I 
went through this quickly, you know, in previous lecture, but here I want to clarify uh, even more. Um, we're taking derivative with the matrix, but however, this is zi, because this zi is only this vector I throw, multiply with this column, it has nothing to do with rows other than i. So uh, this is a key observation that uh, uh, So uh, what happens is, um, so what happens is, I mean, it's actually, because to take derivative of the, all the matrix, you know, it's only has anything to do is that specific row. So this is i row. And now, if we think about this, zi, all right, is is this multiply with that? So um, it's just whoops, zi of i one, zi wi two, blah blah blah, uh, and zi. W, I, N. So it's the nth column. And then we transpose. Okay. Keep this in mind. Um, oh, no, no transpose. There is no transpose. My bad. So W, I is a row vector. So this should be a row vector as well. All right. And if we take derivative of this, and keep this in mind, zi is wi1 times a1, okay? So if we take derivative, if we take partial derivative, we'll get this a1. If we take derivative of the second component, First one, multiply with this. Second one, multiply with a2. So we'll get a2, okay? The same thing, we get a n. But this is a row vector, so it actually equals the column vector a transpose. Then this is, uh, this is z i w. And now if we look at, if we look at, if we look at um, chain rule. So if we look at a chain rule, what happens is if we look at this guy, okay. Um, sorry. So if we look at uh, um, the stacked version of this, okay. So if we look at the stack version of this, keep this in mind. This is this is like z vector and z i is like a single entry of it, okay. So this is like i throw of z. Um. Now, if we if we can uh, fathom this, the ith row of z taking derivative with respect to w, we get a vector a, okay? So this, because for every row, for every row we'll get a, okay? A transpose. So a transpose, a transpose, dot, 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 a transpose. All right, so it's a transpose stacked uh, vertically. N times, I think M times, right? Yes, M times. So um, then this is uh, the derivative of Z, this vector. Um, with respect to this W, okay? 
So what happens is we know that a, we know that a is has n entries. Okay. So this is one by n vector. It's a transpose, and this matrix. So this matrix has m columns. I'm sorry, m rows and n columns. And now let's look at uh, um, something. So if we have a scalar function, so this is our loss function, which is a scalar, taking derivative of z, then multiply with z taking derivative of w. So keep this in mind, this has the same shape. So same shape with z, which is, uh, uh, which is m by one vector. Oops. So this is like what happens is this is this is our partial L, partial Z, and uh, it multiply with this matrix. Okay. However, its multiplication is element wise multiplication. So I should uh, say this up more in the more uh, like fashion. So for example. This is like a sum of uh, i from one. Let me use j, m, uh, partial, partial z, j times partial z, j, partial w. So what happens is um, we have this, uh, um, this is m by one vector. So this is partial L partial Z vector. And then multiply with this matrix, which has N columns and M rows. And this is element wise multiplication. So this has uh, M rows and it has N columns. And also keep this in mind we want to keep this in mind. So um, by element wise multiplication, we mean the first entry is multiplied with this whole row. Okay, so for example, the first entry, the first entry here is multiplied with the row here. And because, because Because this matrix, every row is the same. So it's equivalent of multiply just the transpose of this row. So this is uh, m by one vector and this is one by n vector. So this is partial L partial W. And this is the reason why, so let's backtrack. So this is the reason why uh, in here or in here, okay? So we have, this is, uh, because in the actual, let, let's just uh, keep this notation, you know, because in the actual computation, our weight is actually transposed, but uh, let's keep this notation. That is the delta. This is essentially uh, partial L, partial Z of L plus one and uh, multiply with this transpose, okay? And moreover, so uh, moreover, what we have is we have to, uh, so this is a first formula. So we need to uh, compute the complexity of this. The other one is we have to compute this guy. So uh, iteratively, so uh, this delta, okay. So delta is being updated also in a recursive fashion. So for example, uh, this is our A of L and being transformed to uh, so Z of L plus one equals W of L, A L plus B L, then uh, F of Z L plus one, we get this, okay. 
So a fine linear transform uh, activation function. And uh, uh, so our delta L of L layer is partial L, partial Z of L. And again, uh, we use chain rule. So if we use chain rule, we can um, get uh, Z of L recursively. Oops. Okay. Um, this one, this one is delta L plus one. Uh, and this guy is assumed. So this guy is assumed to be known. Um, so this one is known when computing uh, delta of L. It's because uh, we backtrack, we backprop from the last layer to the previous layer. So when we compute uh, the previous layer's derivative, we assume, you know, so we compute this layer's derivative, we assume the layer of this, de the derivative of this layer is now. So, and uh, um, multiply with this guy. So it's uh, L, uh, delta L plus one uh, times, because Z of L is, uh, uh, is partial Z L of W of L multiply with F of Z L, okay, plus B of L. So uh, let me move this uh, in front. So we're taking derivative of a ZL here. So first, again, uh, we have to use chain rule. So we have a, a WL here. So, and we have, this is WL. And then, um, and this is element wise multiplication. Um, And to simplify this, we can transform. So this is this is matrix vector multiplication. This is element-wise multiplication. And uh, um, overall, we can rewrite this as um, WL transpose delta of L plus one, and then element-wise multiplication of F prime of Z of L. Okay, so this is delta L. And uh, uh, now let's uh, count the uh, complexity. Um, so now let's count the complexity. Uh, what happens here is uh, um, so complexity. So WL is, so WL is again, M by M matrix or M by M, I forgot. Uh, yeah, M by M matrix, okay. So what happens is the complexity above, so let's call this uh, uh, equation number two and uh, let's call here equation number one, which is um, another uh, back propagation. So in the complexity of equation number two is then uh, order 
m times n. Okay. But multiply, multiply the complexity、um, of computing. Like、uh, so, we have evaluating、uh, this one. So we have m by n, and multiply this vector, and element-wise multiply with this. So we have、uh, we have totally like、uh, m rows. So for each m, we have to multiply with this. Okay, so. So let me let me rephrase it. This is matrix vector multiplication. Okay. This is matrix vector multiplication, but for each entry, we have to, you know, repeat、uh, this、uh, element-wise multiplication, and we totally we have m rows, so we have this many operations for two, and for one, for one it's not too bad. So for one, we just have a single matrix vector multiplication.、Uh, for example, I'm sorry.、Uh, for one, we only have,、uh, for example, this is M,、uh, this is、uh, A. Okay. So what we need to do is、uh, we just、uh, multiply a single entry here with this entry here. So、uh, it's still M by N. So、um, it's order M by N. All right, and when we add these two together, okay, so this one will prevail. And again, this is for a single sample, single layer. So, if we have, if we have,、uh, um, if we have n l layers, okay, capital n samples. So backprop complexity will be. Will be order m square n times n l times capital n, and it's approximately order n the fifth. If uh, uh, if uh, n equals order n and、uh, m equals order n and n l equals order n. And by the way,、uh, the order n fifth is a, a magnitude bigger than forward pass. So this tells us the back propagation computationally costs like much much more than、uh, back propagation. So、uh, that's it for today. So on Friday we'll learn、uh, how do we code、uh, the back propagation. And uh, uh, so uh, I'll I'll leave here for a few minutes. If you have some quick question,、uh, you're welcome to stay here and ask.